Okay, Dan, you're all set. Okay, I'd like to bring the meeting to order. It is 6.09 uh, this evening as far as doing that. In pursuance of the Governor Blake, uh, yeah, Baker's March 12th, 2020 orders suspend certain provisions in the open meeting law. Uh, okay. We're going to skip that because we all know what it's all about. So the first thing on our agenda tonight is going to be the Franklin uh, Franklin County Tech Schools presentation. So with that, uh, not further ado, I would like to have Rick start the presentation and we'll be all ears. Okay, well, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, my business manager uh, is not here tonight. And uh, so I will uh, be doing the meeting solo. I would like an opportunity, if I could, to share my screen. So that would, um, you know, if I'm able to do that. Um, yes, um, you might have to just explain to me. Do I just hit share screen? Is it that simple? I No, um, that that's for you it is. But for me, I think you have to make me a co-host temporarily. And then, um, then I'll be able to share my screen. I think you can hit share screen. Try that, Beth. I just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't do it yet. So you have um, to go, I think you have to click on my picture on the oh three dots on the side, and then you'll give me permission to be a co-host or something like that. So if you okay. click the three dots on the side, on, on the top, be your, on the top right-hand side there, right, up, right one next second. to my picture. I'm not sure what I did. Can you guys see what I have on here? Because, oh, jeez. Yeah, I can't share before. yet. So it's um, you oh, should make see a host. three dots. Yep, and then make a host. Yep. Okay. And then once that's done, let me know, and then I can share my screen. It says host next to your name, so. Well, I got it. I, I now I can share my screen. Okay. So can you see the um, the budget? the front page of the budget book in front of you? I can, yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So um, I'm going to have our school committee votes on this budget on Wednesday night. And after that, I can send everybody out electronic copies of the budget. I did send out a um, draft out. I have my administrative send it out uh, to the town. I don't know who received it. Um, but this is a draft budget that will be approved on Wednesday night, hopefully, and we can move forward. Um, I'm going to help you navigate through the budget. I changed the entire format of the budget to make it easier for anyone who can't sleep at night to read the budget. <laughs> All joking aside. Um, so <laughs> if you go to the table of contents, everything in the table of contents that you want to find is clickable. So if you see a little hand, you can get right to every single thing in the budget. Now, the main part of the budget is on page nine called Uses and Sources of Funding. So I just clicked that on. It gets me to page nine. And this is to really the totality of the entire budget. And what happens is anything you see in the entire document that is highlighted in blue has an explanation to it or will point you to further information. So when we look at the assessment to towns, on how we get our money, if I click on that, a hand comes up, right? Well, that will take you directly to the explanation assessment to towns, right? And so that will get you an understanding on what our assessments been. Basically, what we're going to have is a um, an overall 1.2% increase to the towns. We had, because of COVID-19, we had a, um, because of COVID-19, we had an excess of $111,000 and then some because at a vocational technical school, we did not use all the supplies, materials, and stock associated with the curriculum because we had students, we had half the group in one day and the other half in the next. So over the last year or so, um, we accumulated some above the cap of 5%. So we're going to give that money back to the towns in the proportion. I'll show you where that actually um, is. If I go down here to the E&D credit and I click that on, right, it explains a little bit more about where we're at with the E&D. 
right? So that this is, if you want to read that short paragraph right here, that will kind of give you an idea on um, that particular that particular line item. If I go and click, this is how much Northfield will get back from the E&D. So if we go down to Northfield right here, you click it, you're gonna go over, you'll get back about 5,667. That's the reduction in your assessment, which kind of knocks us down to an overall assessment for all our towns at 1.2%. So I go back over here, this gets me back to the explanation and then I'll get back to the top. So when I go back to the sources of funding, this is how we get our money, the assessment to the towns. Of course, we have to do the same thing with the, um, the capital assessment and debt service. And that's the old windows and doors project we did from like six, seven years ago. And then um, the cap and then the chapter 70 money as you notice, there's a significant increase in chapter 70. That's a pretty significant increase from one year to the next. A lot of that had to do with increased enrollment because if you have an increased enrollment, you're gonna get a little more money coming in in the Student Opportunity Act. So the other thing is when I look at where I got that money from, the 5,470,850 and the next line, regional transportation reimbursement, at 765,000, I click on the cherry sheet. So you can do this too when you get our budget book and it will show you that same five, four and seven, six, five. I wanted this budget book to be so transparent that anyone can look on and find any school they want, find out how they got their money. So I provided a link at the bottom of here that gets you to the Department of Ed Revenue I mean, the, the, uh, the Department of Revenue, and it will take you to this sheet. If you wanted to scroll for Pioneer or Mohawk or Franklin County Tech, you scroll down here to Franklin County Tech, you click it on, you press submit, and look at that number. The same number I just had in my 5470865, and the same with the regional transportation. So now you know exactly where the dollars came from. And that's an important transparency that um, we didn't have in past budgets. And so we worked a little harder this year to make sure we could include it. So I go back to the main sheet here. And now we go down to non-member towns. We have about 33 plus kids. They have to pay substantially more to come here. So that totaled about 650,000. Uh, tuition from our prep, that's a self-contained um, shop type of program for kids that tuition in from out of district. Um, these kids have significant learning disabilities and they're in district and out of district. We couldn't take any money from them this year because they had declining enrollment. Again, like everything in the budget that's highlighted in blue, if you wanted that explanation, you just click it on and it will take you right to that explanation about the reduced number of students and staff. So I go right back here and I'm right back to the tuition. And the other revenues is like a surplus equipment. We auction off something, Medicaid reimbursements and things like that. And you can see our excess and deficiency number here was 0.87% above the 5% cap, which is the reason why Northfield is receiving a reduction in their assessment by more than $5,500. So that's about a $14,358 um, money that we receive. How we use that money? Well, if you can imagine if your enrollment goes up, so is your instructional services. So here's the instructional services line item. We bumped up from just a few years ago at 5.8 million to 7.2 million. And that's important to note and when you're trying to figure out, are we having too many teachers for the amount of students or what have you? Well, all the explanations, if you click on this, it will bring you to this instructional services. It will tell you what departments were increased. And I'm gonna give a further demonstration of that. All these numbers that you see here are our budget software numbers, which correlate with the line item. So if I were to click one of those on, it will take me right to 
the culinary arts salaries. And it was a big increase from 187 a few years ago to the 250 we are now that's because we added an instructor to fit the increased enrollment so everything will have an explanation to it one important thing that should be noted now i, I generally do this at the end of the budget but i'm going to do it right now is when we look at the pie chart for um our town assessments back in 2017-18 you can see it almost looking like a pac-man it's time to eat up all of the other revenues towns were taxed with more than 56 percent about 55.5 percent of the total number of our budget. Well, today, because of efficiencies and grown enrollment, towns are now 46%. So they're not as much. The same can be said here for instructional services. You can look here. Back in 2016-17, we had 51% of our entire budget was paid towards salaries and instructional services. And we added 15 positions since then. And we actually have a little less than our total. It's only 50% of our total budget, 50.36. So we have to do these calculations to ensure we're being efficient. When we hire staff on, we need to meet the demands that are associated with that. So when I go back to the top, go back to the uses of funding here, that will explain that. So student services is your special education area, pupil tra uh, transportation, uh, we're budgeted right around here. And as many of you are aware, we have 561 square miles of territory, which is by far the largest geographical regional school district in the state. And we get reimbursed that number that was up here. So there's a gap. Again, the state's never gonna reimburse us the whole amount. So that's where that is now. Plant operations and maintenance went up because we added a, um, we, we added a custodian and a half because of COVID-19, all of our vocational equipment needed to be defogged and wiped down after every use. We didn't have the, we didn't have the ability to do that. Um, plus, we are building a new veterinary clinic, and that's going to be quiet. So we added the appropriate maintenance to get us back to levels that we had about eight years ago. Then you have your typical retirement contributions and insurances. And uh, that kind of rounds off the budget from how we use it to how we receive it. One of the important components I just like to take you down to. So here's all the explanations of everything that was in blue. Anything you click on just take you back to the line item budget. And then you get your traditional line item budget. So you're used to looking at this. Anything highlighted in blue means there was a significant discrepancy, whether up or down within the line item budget. So you go here, you see treasurer salary. Well, we actually have part of our business manager salary embedded into that because we're training a new treasurer to come on board. And so we're trying to um, get them involved and become a next business manager potentially down the road. Um, and so here's all our other ones for the academic school leadership, um, special education. Here's a lot of the increases are in these curriculum areas you know we added a little bit more to spanish um and there's uh we added a little bit more to social studies let me get back to that sorry about that and um yeah the there i was so then we go down to we're gonna get down to northfield all right so i'm gonna go right down to where northfield lies after the end of this this is all the line item budget. Now, um, this is all the copies you're going to have within a few days. This is your capital assessment from that bond I was talking about. So Northfield for this year, capital is 11430 And that's something that's done through the equalized valuation process. And they recalculate that every few years and they spit out the different percentiles. We don't project this 205,000 number to you know, that's lower than it um, was last year. And it kind of goes up or down depending on the individual valuation of the towns. Then I go, I showed you this sheet. Now here's an interesting fact. Franklin County Tech sits here at 583 total students, including out of district. We are the second largest 
um, high school in the county with 604 being Frontier, but you also know this Frontier has grades seven through 12 as do all the other schools. So we're just grades nine through 12. Where did I get this figure from? I think it's important. Like I said, the whole budget should be very transparent. All the numbers that I gathered weren't numbers I came up with. So these enrollment figures for Franklin County Tech, and here we go down to uh, Pioneer, seven through 12. Here's all the numbers for Pioneer in here, each grade level. That helps with future projections, and we have an idea. I got the number, if you click on that link, that will take you right to the Department of Ed. You can scroll down to Pioneer or wherever. You can get the exact numbers from K through 12 per grade level. So you can do a lot of investigation for any school district you want when you get done with this. I just wanna let you know where I got all the numbers from and you can double check those. Then um, here's our enrollment right now. We're at 546 in district right here. And we're projecting 566. That's the pinnacle. That's as high as we're gonna be for the next 10 years. And I can say that with a degree of confidence in district. Because when I look at this next sheet, and where did I get these numbers from? Again, you just click down here and you'll see they come right from the state. Then I go up here to our enrollment trends. I want you to look at this. I'll explain this in like a minute. The blue lines are the total number of eighth graders that are available within the county on any given year. So any blue line is the total number of eighth graders that are available. This was 662 students on the blue line that were available back in 2015-16. The orange or red, depending on what screen you have, is the number of students of that total number that came into Franklin County Tech that given year, the number of freshmen. So we took 132 students. We had 662. Over here, this last year, we were down to 625 available students and we accepted 167. So on the surface, it looks like we're taking more students. Percentage wise, we're taking significantly less. And here's why. That 132 number over here was based on 156 applicants in which 14 weren't qualified because they didn't pass the eighth grade. This number of 167 represents 286 applicants, which only seven weren't qualified. So now we have a waiting list, which we never had before. As that number is our high, you'll see us drop. We're slowly dropping. And the reason for that is the blues are slowly dropping. So we're gonna have, be in that same percentile of students. And then why did that percentile jump up? You see it from here from 19.9% all the way up. Obviously more interest in the school and we can attribute it to, we started a new veterinary program. We started a new medical assistant program. We enhanced our manufacturing program and we had a lot more, um, we had a lot more interest from our communities, from these type of programs that we never had before. So I think that really contributed to it. And as you can see, our enrollment will start to decline. Now that doesn't mean your enrollment will always decline. It depends year to year. So here's the way it looks for North. Well, this is our special education population. We continue to be the highest in the entire county uh, with all the other high schools. This is just grades nine through 12, by the way, this data. So you'll see some of these numbers are much higher in some of the other schools, but that's K through 12. We're nine through 12, so we compared the same nine through 12. If you wanted to find out how to get that information, you just click here. When I go to Northfield, here's the Northfield enro enrollment trends. Last year I came here and I predicted that you would have about 29 students. You ended up with 28 for this current year. So there's your 28 students. Um, that, was, that was an increase of one. So your, so your assessment went up mildly. We, we are predicting here, we have nine 12th graders that will be graduating. Currently we have 18 applicants. If all 18 got in, which I don't believe usually happens, we take about 88%. At the worst case that I can see right now, 
that would drop, if you subtract the nine from the 28, that leaves us with about, you know, we have 29, it says down here. That's because one kid came in after October 1. So the numbers you see here are our October 1 numbers. And the ones down here are the ones who are currently in the building. All right. So we have 29 currently in the building. So if we subtracted the nine that are graduating, that would lead that number down to 20 for Northfield. If we add the 18 applicants, that would come up to 38 for next year. And that would be in the facility. We used to be there, what, five, six years ago? We had 42, 39, 35. So we're either going to be 39, 40, or 33, 34. We'll be anywhere between like 32 to 40 when it's all said and done. I, I try to take a higher estimate here um, for next year. Our per pupil expenditures, I can get to that in a second. Um, Northfield's per pupil numbers are right here at 16,235. And that is guided by the state of Massachusetts. A wonderful formula that they come up with um, regarding property taxes, relative income, and what have you. And our overall per pupil cost is 12,077. So our average per pupil is lower than many of the member communities that are even in the pioneer region. Um, vocational education used to be higher, but because of increased enrollment and efficiencies, our numbers came down a little bit. So then we look at um, the assessment to the towns and what this is, is just your trend. So you can see the Northfield trend laid out here and then the assessments and what they looked like. So you can see um, there was a slight reduction here than the previous year, even though your enrollment went up one because our per people cost had dropped down. Now Northfield used to be above $18,000 per, per student for Franklin County Tech. It's dropped. So that's, um, so, for at least our school. I don't know what it is, you know, for the other schools, but it's definitely gone down. So that's kind of the nut and bolts of the, um, of the presentation. I can certainly um, go back there and um, re uh, screen anything that you would like a little more information about. But uh, so in a nutshell, we are, um, we have leveled off with our enrollment and we expect that level off based on kindergarten enrollment currently. And so I went all the way back to the eighth grade um, and we're expecting that enrollment to level off over the next 10 years. Lois, since you're back, you can take over the meeting. Okay, thanks, Dan. I apologize, everybody. I got trouble finding stuff tonight, I guess. Anyway, hi, Rick. And, uh, I think it's very, just the part I've heard here is very thorough. I don't know whether any of you have any questions or not. Uh, the capital, I, I read in the paper, of course, what they wrote up about your budget and, and the addition you're going to put on to the building. Maybe you talked about that before I came on. No, I didn't really go into too much detail regarding that. So basically what we're doing is we're running out of space internally. So we got rid of our assembly hall and we had a company come in divided up to four 1,000 square foot classrooms. Um, at the same breath, we started new programs, a new medical assistant, new veterinary science program, but we had no space in the building to house that. So we had to take over a chemistry room and some adjoining classrooms in order to accomplish that feat. So we got together and um, we are gonna be building a veterinary clinic right on our property um, abut in the boulevard. And that will help alleviate some of the internal space and provide, and it would be good to have the animals and things like that out to be visible rather than hidden behind the building. And we can take, and we're able to make a much larger space. We expect that the, um, foundation and the site work will be completed sometime late spring, early summer. We expect that the erection of the steel building itself will be up sometime over the summer. 
And then our students will work on the interior probably most of next year and see if they can finish that up. So it would save, well, we're estimating at least a few million dollars because our students are doing the interior of the work and the whole thing is gonna be pennies on the dollar uh, compared to if our students were not involved. So it's, um, it will be good to get that project done and um, that will alleviate some internal space in our building as well. Thank you. I have a question. How do you get a, away from the uh, prevailing wage when you do that, something like that? Well, there is a, um, as long as your building is, um, your, your raw materials fall under $150,000, right? So there is one element. Then there are two other elements. We went through the state um, with our attorney and with theirs to make sure before we went down that road. And there's another clause in there around vocational education students doing work as well. So they went through the whole nine yards. I'm not the expert on that. That would be more my business manager. Um, but we had um, numerous things before we went down that route. And we found out, like, for instance, an OPM. Well, that clock starts at something north of $500,000 of raw materials. Well, we were significantly below that. Um, square footage, you know, that clock ticks around $5,000. we are going to be much smaller than that. So those kind of things. Okay. I, I don't know if all of you uh, received the uh, saw your material this after, today that um, I received the budget, the, all the charts he was talking about and, and, uh, and sent it out to everybody. So you should all have your copies of that. Right. Yeah, the other thing about that is, it, 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 and Lois, I don't think you were here at the beginning of the meeting, we're going to be voting on that at our school committee on Wednesday night. So it will actually be a live document after Wednesday. Yes. Okay. So we should and, wait on, on that till after Wednesday to look at it completely. That, that would be fine. Yeah. Because right now it's just in a draft form. Yeah. Okay. But that it's exactly as will be presented to your committee Wednesday night. Then yes, yep, yeah. exactly. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, now you started the nursing program a couple of years ago, right? Well, actually, we started the veterinary program about um, two and a half years ago, and um, and and now. Um, let just the beginning of this year, we started the medical assistant program and it, we have the health tech, we have the health program, the health technology, which is a certified nurse and assistant track. Medical assistant is a certified medical assistant track, an entirely different track. Um, and that was just because of the interest that was in the area it was pretty significant as you can be aware of um, with the shortage in hospitals and things like that. So it's more on the pre-nursing track than it is on the certified um, assistant track. I see, okay. Well, I, I think you're doing a great job of responding to the needs of the community and that's what it's all about really. I mean, you had, uh, Machinery donated a few years back, didn't you, by some of our manufacturing companies to be sure they had up-to-date machines to work on. And uh, I think you had told us that you had a lot of uh, requests for this veterinary program now. Yeah, and, this, and the, it's fully enrolled, which is refreshing to hear. I think that's um, extremely good. And the other thing is that you know, we keep going out to the schools and what have you, and we're strong believers that the, um, you know, vocational technical education isn't for every student. There are some students that will benefit much better. I would say even a majority of students benefit better by staying at their high school. So, you know, I'm working with the state now to try to bridge the gap that those students that um, feel though they, you know, at the end of high school, they're saying, well, I may not want to go on to college and I may wanna get a trade. So we're working with the state to develop what we call an after doc program where students who make that last minute decision could get extra training, you know, outside like, you know, from like three o'clock on at Franklin County Tech at no cost. 
So we're trying to figure all that stuff out to try to help out our area schools as well. Good. That's good. Because the, the area schools are all c complaining about a decline in enrollment. Right. But this is, uh, you're responding to the need that's, that's in this area. Well, the industry has driven it. I think that's what happened. It was the um, change in industry demand um, has really, um, you know, it's, we have 50% of all of our seniors out on paid co-op. So they're actually getting paid every other week by their employer during the school day on a paid supervised co-op. And I think that's an important uh, distinction um, as far as the type of students that want to go to Franklin County Tech are going to exhibit a different profile than the ones that do not. Um, but we want to try to develop more programming to support our neighboring communities so that students don't feel like they have to go to tech just because they're interested in something and they could get all their education at their school. And then if they want to develop a trade, we may have that pathway. So we're trying to work on all those avenues as well. Yeah, and, and what I see too is that you're training your students for the jobs that may be available in this area. Correct, right. That's, what's it? Does uh, anyone have any questions or any comments they want to make? Now's the time. I have, I have one question. <clears throat> okay, the Josh. The capital assessment, is that included within the fiscal year 23 assessment or is that a separate uh, amount? That, that would be a separate amount um, that depends. Some towns will lump it together. So when they get to their town meeting and they vote on it, some towns will take the, um, the assessment and they'll combine it with the capital assessment for one lump sum for the voters to vote on. Other towns divide those out. So we leave it like that for the towns to make their own options. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Any comments? A very good presentation. Appreciate that. Well, thank yes. you. Uh, I just want to say, I've been listening to this for over 20, 20 years, and you guys are so professional, and I thank you so much for that. Well, th th thank you very much. It's a team process, obviously. Yeah, we, we do appreciate it, and we wish I'd we like to, I, I really think that that budget book is going to take the common person where they can scroll down and find anything, you know, with the table of contents and all the links and links to it. It's, it's trying to, it's getting built so that anyone, it can be 100% transparent. You can find every penny there. And yeah. I think that's really important. Very good. Sue, did you have a question? No. Oh, okay. All excellent right. Excellent presentation, that's all. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Appreciate have a good night. Thank you. you. Yep. Would you possibly be at town meeting uh, to answer questions? Yes, I usually am or Russ, my business manager, because what happens a lot of the time with the number of towns, everyone seems to have their town meeting on the same day. So <laughs> Russ and right. I are going to different spots. So yeah. and, and there have been times I've had three in the same time frame and I had to send somebody else. So it depends on how many they are. OK, that's understandable. Yep. You can't Absolutely. be every place. So ours is uh, the first Monday in May. Someone should make someone should take back the host of the meeting because if I log out, I'm going to end the meeting for everybody. So someone should take back the host so I don't end your meeting. Rick, can you make um, Town of Northfield um, me this one because I know Andrea's logged in um, the host. Yes, I can. So thank you. Make I was going to ask about that. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, because if I ever logged out. <laughs> <laughs> that would not make for a fun night for anybody here. So you guys take care and have a good evening. Enjoy the rest Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, take care. Okay. Uh, I guess now we have the rec commission, I believe. Yeah. Do we have someone from the rec mm -hmm. commission? Casey. Okay. And Joe's here too, I believe. 
He's muted though. Okay. So hear me now. Joe, you're from the oh. Rec Commission. Stacy, are you from the Rec Commission as well? I'm also on the Rec Commission, yes. Okay, two of you from the Rec Commission. Okay. Uh what we uh as you've probably gathered by now, we don't make any just you both haven't been before us before. So I'll just tell you, we don't make a decision tonight. We have to get all our requests for capital plans and and operating budgets and then later see how much money we do have available and allocate that according to the best of our ability. So uh, what we look for when you're presenting a budget like this is any uh, changes in your budget and uh, particularly, you know, any increases or decreases. And I think the rec commission ended up with the same total amount, but you made changes as to allocating that money. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, do you want to uh, explain to us why you made these changes? Um, We've all got a copy of your budget. Recently in the last uh, MyRec software program we were using for registration, um, that increased uh, a lot of our budget in um, the purchase or supplies account. And we decided that um, to a lot more hourly wage per our program director and shifted the money around, just like, as you said, to keep it level. I hope I'm coming through okay. Yeah. All right, that was, uh, that would be program. All right, the first two lines then, that is. Right? And then, uh, We get down to purchase services. You drop that. By five hundred dollars. Yeah. What uh what does that represent? What what do you put? under your purchase services that you could reduce it by that amount. You Joe? hear me, Lois? No, I'm not. Oh, must be Stacy talking. Can you hear us, Stacy? I can hear you guys. Uh, Joe, you're coming in pretty um, it's not coming through very well, I don't think. If you're not, if you're talking now, we're not hearing it, Joe. So Stacey, I mean, since you can hear us as far as doing that, uh, the purchases, uh, what does the de uh, decrease by $500 mean? Oh, I wish I could say for sure. I'm still new for in the rec commission, so um, okay. I'm still I learning. Some of my stuff I here. Think he's, I think he's muted, maybe. If you would like, I could try calling Joe on the phone and getting the answer that way. Sure. Okay, hang on. I saw a thing that flashed on the screen that Joseph's bandwidth is low. Joseph, probably he why we're having trouble. Anything. You guys can hear me okay, right? Yeah, we can hear, no, we can hear you and see. Yes. <laughs> I do. Really? Um, they're asking what the difference, um, the decrease in the purchase services and why that is. Okay, hang on. He says they used to use the Myrex software program for registration. Okay. All right. And the next one is, let's look across on the no. line. Um, hang on one second, Lois. So one more time. Is 
They said they reduced it because they wanted to allot more hours to the program director position. Okay. All right. Tell Joe he's, his muted button is on, for one. Yeah, Dan is uh, just telling you that your mute button is on. Muted, that's, yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Well, I just, it just keep kicking them right out, though, is the reason. Oh, okay. If yeah, he's trying he to do out. too much bandwidth by mute and video, he should turn his video off, and then he might be heard. That's the same problem I have. Turn your video off. Did you hear that, Joe, the suggestion to shut your video off and just do your voice, and that might, might work better? If his bandwidth is a problem, that. do audio, not visual. Okay. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll hang up with you. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. I right. Good idea. Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> I did do a meeting with AgCom that way, so. <laughs> okay. All right, Joe, do you have anything else you want to tell us about your budget request? What happened? Like he's kicked out. I, think. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm could, could you explain to them about the um, groundskeeping? Yeah, he's asking me to explain to you about the groundskeeping and why that's up. So I can talk to that. Um, there was somebody who was doing the groundskeeping for quite a number of years. Um, was a family? It was a actually a parent of, of of someone, and so it was it was done pretty much at a, a pretty reduced cost. Um, I have reworked the specification and I'm putting out a request for quotes. Um, and just based on my multiplication of the number of weeks and a slight, not even that much of an increase in the cost of that. So it's like 30 weeks at about $250 a week, we were paying 225. That's gonna actually come to $7,500. So I had increased it to 7,000. Um, I'm hoping that that hopefully will be enough with the number of weeks that have to be done. And maybe we won't have 250, maybe we'll still get someone in at 225. But that, um, that amount was um, quite low, hadn't changed in years. And I think that the reason it hadn't changed is because the person doing it was kind of doing it under market value for a number of years. Um, and now that we're gonna go to somebody new, that, that's probably not gonna be, that's probably not gonna cover it. So my best guess right now is that $7,000 figure. Uh, I should have a real number in a matter of a few weeks because I'm soliciting quotes now. I've done a scope of work and I'm soliciting quotes at the t at this time. Okay, thank you. Anybody, any questions on that part of it, on the maintenance of the field? No, nope, okay. I understand it completely. I don't uh, see any capital requests for the rec commission. Am I correct that you did not have any? I didn't receive one. Right, okay. I, I, is he trying to speak to us or not? He's muted, that's showing up as that he's muted as far as I'm concerned. You guys are coming through Stacey, better now. you are too. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes can. Okay, great. Um, I, didn't catch much of what was heard, but I got brief tail ends of each conversation. Um, we kept our budget level. Um, we made an adjustment for the athletic fields supplies account. Uh, I think Stacy was able to trans transmit the, um, the change of hours from the program director from our old software. Um, so we made a couple adjustments on a few other accounts to bring that balance up. But we got the note that stated that you guys wanted a level budget. So we just tried to keep it level, but allocated funds to different accounts. Yes. Okay. But I wanted to ask a question in regards to the athletic fields. Um, now that the bid is being put out, 
Is the town responsible for the oversight on the grounds now, or is that still going to remain a, uh, something the Recreation Commission has to do? No, you well, guys can still oversee it. I was just uh, soliciting the quote. The Rec Commission is the town, is representing the town in that capacity. Yes, it'll still be the Rec Commission. I'm assuming based on my bid specs that the Rec Commission will be in direct contact with the new vendor because someone's gonna to have to tell them, communicate them game schedules because I won't have any way of knowing that. And obviously when they go to ma maintain the law in school, obviously that we can know school hours, but they will have to, someone will have to be in touch to let them know game hours once that schedule is set. So they will know when they will be able to maintain the fields, whether it's a weekend or an evening or whatever that may be. So yes, no, this person will, once we have somebody that I'm going to turn them to the rec commission to, to, to deal with, because you will, you guys will best know your schedule. I, I won't have any clue. Yes, thanks, Andre. Uh, okay, Jody, you, you get that? Um, yeah, we're just not actively participating in the search for this position, so we don't have any details on uh, who, the, who the town plans to hire or on uh, how to schedule or inform this person of our game schedules and programs that occur. I know with our last groundskeeper, it was very contingent upon when he was able to do it. Um, outside of school hours, outside of sports programs and other activities at the field. Right, so. They'll be given your contact information to set that up with you. I'm just procuring the services. Once that person is procured, then you have to set up a schedule with them. And it's in the, it's in the quote that they will be subject to school and game hours. They have, they'll know that when they're bidding services, they'll just have to contact you about getting those hours. Once, once they're procured, then they're gonna work with you guys. And they have to follow, Joe, they have to follow legal procedures as far as uh, advertising and, and hiring and interviewing and that sort of thing. But as Andrea said, then it's uh, turned over to you people. They'll, she'll give you the information when it's ready. We're not going to be a part of the, the hiring process so that we can sort of it inquire with the potential bidders of, of how well their communication will be open and available to us because we, well, we that, sort of hold our that's activities part of the spec. outside of like um, normal business hours. So if someone only holds yes. communications during only business hours and we got to contact them on a Saturday because the field has four inches of grass and it hasn't been cut, um, I'd like to have a develop a relationship with whoever it is and I think our commission would like to as well to um, have a good open form of back and forth chit chat. Well, you, you'll have the ability to communicate with them when we have the procurement done, because I, I mean, I've done this for a rec before, two fields in Buckland, uh, the ball field and the whole recreation area. They, they don't necessarily have to, they don't come necessarily during business hours. They might do a weekend. They might do a late afternoon. They might do it six and you know five in the morning before school starts really what if as long as they do it once a week and keep the field in shape we don't really care when they do it what they'll just need from you guys is the schedule school hours are pretty much set you'll just no one knows the game schedule yet there's nothing much you can tell them until you guys set the game schedules and then that will be forwarded to them if they don't if they don't perform then you will have a contact person for that company no different than at any other time where you will contact them and say, hey, the fields aren't getting done. If they don't do them regularly, or if there's enough trouble, we terminate their service for, for failure to, to meet the bid. But that's just, that's the case no matter what. So it's, it's you know, you'll, you'll be the ones with the relationship with them. And if they don't work out, then you terminate them. But it's just a question of writing a, a spec and because it's under 10,000, I have to contract at least three vendors to get quotes based on a, a consistent spec. They all have to respond to the same spec. And I spoke to the school, 
and I spoke to the previous vendor to get a sense of what they were doing so that I could write a spec because it only makes sense to write a spec based on what what the people what 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 they're doing. So I took what he was doing, took notes from him, wrote up a spec, um, and that's what we're going to ask people to bid on, to give us a number on. But we have to give them the same thing so they can all give us the same answer or an answer on the same criteria. That's what the bid spec is. Stacy, did be... you want to say something? No, particularly. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm sort of moral support and, and here for learning. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Joe, that answer your question? Um, yeah, I, I understand the, 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 the legal um, procedure that we have to adhere to, but um, as far as, as the quality of control that we're going to have over this is going to be cumbersome. Historically, um, the Recreation Commission has put out the bid for um, contractors to do the, the, the job. As you can see, the school couldn't do it in the past. I don't know if you remember that, Lois. They turned over those athletic accounts to the Recreation Commission because those were just supposed to be for athletic fields, but no one could consistently keep maintaining the property as much as the parents that we could find in our local community who could be there, you know, within a very short distance and have a regular presence. So as now if we go commercially with the legal proceedings, we're we're uh, we're going to get caught in a sort of a trap. I feel that if we're not satisfied with the level of service, we have to go through the whole process of putting out a bid again like that. Where versus where we find someone we know is going to work based on the input we can put into the employees we search for, not necessarily so, just the legal. So the, things, I guess. It was a parent, but the parent had a landscaping company. That's a fluke. You can't just have parents do this. They have to have insurance. This has to be, this is a, this is, you know, when you work for the town to do something like this, you have to be insured. I mean, if any parent has a landscaping company, which has just happened to have be what happened. I mean, I spoke to your previous person. They didn't really bid on anything. They kind of started doing it because there wasn't anybody, but they happened to be a landscaper. So they had the equipment and lived close enough that they were able to do it. It wasn't really procured it was sort of a fluke and they did it for a number of years and they really just aren't interested in continuing it anymore. But we still have to find somebody who has the ability to do it, but also the proper insurance. I mean, the town can't just have a neighbor do this. There's a liability issue here. We were lucky enough, I agree with you in the past, to have a parent who happened to live close enough and who happened to actually have a landscaping business. Total fluke. But that's not how this normally works. And I don't, uh, from my understanding from him, he was not procured by anybody in particular. He sort of fell into it. And I do know the last I had heard, there was a procurement where they tried to procure way back when Brian was here. Of course, now you're talking six or seven years ago. And that's how this whole thing ended up becoming the town taking it over versus the school. I don't know what happened in between that. This parent has only been doing it. I, I don't think he's been doing it that whole time. So I don't know what happened three or four years prior to this parent, um, but it's not it's not a question of just seeing who wants to do it and they can come down with their local tractor on Saturday afternoon and do it. We can't do that. That's not that's not legal. But uh, it'll be similar. To, we have contractors that. Uh, do the cemetery work, right? It'll be similar to that. Right. We contract with someone. We give them the specification if they and they, and they should be able to handle it. I mean, there's other companies that have done uh, do recreational fields for towns. They understand that there's constraints on days when you can and can't do this. You just have to make sure they have the schedule. They just have to be able to know. And and putting them in touch with a person from Rec is a is a great way to do it because then they can. Um, that person from REC can make sure that they're doing it. And if they're not there, they call them up and say, hey, you're supposed to come once a week. But you know, you do have to give them the schedule so that they will know not to show up in the middle of a soccer game or whatever's happening. Generally speaking, they'll work their way around that. They schedule all their clients um, 
I'm hoping it's somebody local and somebody small enough that it's not going to be a big deal, but I can't predict that. But it has to be at least a legitimate person who has the kind of insurance we need to make sure that that they're um, able to, to do this legally and legitimately. Lois, I just wanted to introduce you to Amy Neal. She's our new director. Yes, hi. Hello. You'll be handling the uh, summer programs and all the other programs through. You yeah. want to make any comments? This is the time. Um, I think I just hopped on at the perfect time because I was trying to sort out the bidding of the lawn care and how that works. So I'm just going to listen right now. Okay. Uh, right. I was just telling him I made a spec, which I had to kind of talk to your previous person and ask them, what do you do? Because <laughs> that's the only way to write a spec for what to be that's to be done is to find out what is being done. And then I, because it's under 10,000 that we're expecting, I could come back higher. We have to wait and see. Um, it was a parent who lived nearby who happened to own a landscaping company. Great combination, perfect, perfect, perfect combination. However, we don't anticipate that that'll probably be the case again. Um, but we have to go with a legitimate somebody who has insurance to do this kind of work for the town. So I put together the spec and I, because it's under 10,000, I can call for quotes. So if anybody knows of somebody who has a company that's licensed and insured and wants to do this, I can call them and say, here's the spec and they can submit, um, can submit a bid. Um, so that's the best case scenario. I'm, I'm willing to take anybody's names and if anybody has a, you know, otherwise I'll reach out to whomever is local. I'm gonna look for small local companies at the very least to see if we can get somebody who's gonna be responsive. Then the, the rec commission, it may be you, um, uh, Amy, is gonna to have to give them the schedule. Uh, periodically so that they know when they can and can't come to do the mowing and they should be able to work around that. That's in the bid. They're going to understand it's a rec field. They're going to be given a schedule. The idea is they're going to do approximately 30 mowings um, between April and the end of October, once a week. Um, and if you need more mowings, they have to give a per mowing cost that you could call them at the last minute and say, oh my gosh, it's been a horrible week. And that turns out we need a second mowing this week. We're not anticipating that. And that then they would be able to come for a set predetermined number should you choose to call them for that. So that's, you know, kind of how the process works. Um, and so once we get those quotes together, you compare them and assuming everybody's responsive and, and provides that their paperwork, you usually go with the lowest quote. So that's how it works. This is a, this is a new year that this process is being done. Um, so historically, be, it's be always been the recreation needed. commission that has sort of um, procured the lawn care. Um, I don't see why um, the Re recreation commission would be held uh, accountable for the oversight if we couldn't. Well, that's that's why you want the it. process of choosing the vendor that's going to provide the services for us to oversee. I'm I'm happy to give you the quotes, Joe, but I'm assuming if they all respond in the same with the same response with a number, all we're doing is choosing the lowest responsive bidder. Yeah, I think it'd be good for us to be a part of that decision making process, just being the first year that this is changing from us doing it to, to the town taking over and making it a legal precedence. I the think town's we should not be taking it over. The town has always run it. Whether someone on the rec commission was doing it outside of the outside of procurement, I don't know. It's been the I same mean, person the since town. I've been here. I meant the chief procurement officer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's the legal proceeding, the, the legal steps that need to be done. That's that's a good idea. But we should also be a part of that process so that there is a good understanding of what we can expect with this contractor and not just take the lowest bid by legal standard. Well, you have to. Uh, uh, Andrea, have they been, couldn't they be furnished a copy of the job description or do you, uh, or the contract, probably the contract, not the job description. So they would know what's being asked of these people. Well, they will be, yes. Okay, let me give you a hypothetical on a, on a season that we would have. 
Um, we're out there on the ball fields. We're playing. There's a storm comes in. The storm keeps the lawn care guy from doing the, the trimming um, that week. The next day, the grass grows two inches. You know, we call the lawn care specialist that we have for communication and say, we need to get our grass cut. And they say, sorry, we don't have an open slot to give you until next week. So we lose a whole week's worth of mowing. Whereas I think if we could be a part of the process and know that someone would be there Thursday for the rainstorm that happened Tuesday and they couldn't, you know what I mean? No, actually I don't because oh, I, that's, can I, I let, me, so, let me so step we, in. Can, we, can, we can have Look, this, discussion is not, this discussion is not relevant to the finance committee. Finance committee. I agree with Jack. This is getting irrelevant to our committee and yeah. should be terminated as soon as possible. Yeah, I don't think this is relevant. We can talk about this, Joe. We don't need to do it at the finance committee meeting. I'm sorry. I thought that's when you wanted to discuss the budget. My my apologies. I just wanted to be clear that the raise on that athletic field account is going to be to hire a new lawn care person for the elementary school. I just wanted to be clear that the process is changing and you should, you all should know that given that there's more money being requested from that budget line. Well, I think the process will is already um, set in place for this year that Andrea knows that she's going to have to advertise this and uh, take care of hiring somebody to do that work. Right, Andrea? So we're all... Yes, so I had to create, no one knew the bid. I had to create a bid. I don't even do the fields, but yes, yes, I'm working on it. And I talked. Okay. All right, Amy, did you have a comment? And then we'll finish on this. No, I was just wanting to clarify the conversation, but I think okay. um, the other people backed me up. So we're all set. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, when we... If, if there's any change in your budget, you'll know what we recommend when that time comes. Um, otherwise, thank you very much. We appreciate your participation tonight. Okay. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Finance Committee. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, next, we have Town Clerk, Dan. We, you have okay. a budget, you have requests. You want to uh, go over it? I don't think uh, that Yeah, basically, I, um, going over the, the first thing is the uh, assistant, and that was an, um, a set amount that we put out there at $10,000. That's pretty much the only thing that really increased my budget. Um, I've gone down in a couple of areas because basically 2000, uh, 2023 is a little bit of an, um, an off year. I don't have as many uh elections uh in 2013 as i do on, in the even years so i was able to reduce some of the um uh, line items um uh let me just see which one it was me uh meetings not going to so many meetings at the moment as far as doing that so that uh took a little bit of a, a break as far as doing that postage since i bought all my uh, stamped envelopes for this year i'm pretty well set on that um other office supplies, I reduced that um, because I, I'm pretty well set at the moment, but I can go through other areas if I needed to purchase uh, through my other purchases if I needed it. Um, so that basically cuts through the town clerk's part. Elections, I reduced um, my other uh, by, again, $1,000. It's, it's kind of an interim year. so. I was able to reduce that. Of course, come 2024, we'll be kicking that back up again because of uh, four or five elections that year. So we'll be we'll be putting that back up as far as doing that. So that's reduced that amount. Um, census. Census has gone up a little bit. I'm being charged a little bit more to do the street lists and census. So I kicked that up uh, $500, a little bit more. That's where some of the postage that I have to get into uh, comes from. So I put in the column that needs to be done. And the other uh, aspect, and I'm actually gonna increase this because I was talking to the people from the code uh, company that's doing the codification. 
Uh, they're chomping at the bit to get ready. I just have to get the okay from the uh, attorney general on all the things that were passed in the uh, annual, uh, the special town meeting. Once that is set, we still have some money in that fund. It doesn't show here, but we will be um, having to have a, a, a funds uh, situated for that. If we have increase or changes in the bylaws that they have to look at and, and codify. And that uh, number basically this year will be a little higher because we've had what's going to happen is the general bylaws that we passed um, probably won't go into effect until after July 1st. And that's when I would be paying the code company to be able to put those in the code. So that's why it, it's up a little. After that, it will probably uh, level off at about $1,500 per year because they have to maintain, they're main, they'll be maintaining the, um, the website basically making sure it's up to date as far as doing it, everything will be uh, there and maintained. And if we change any bylaws, it would come out of that fund, which means that some years it may not be used and some years it, it would be used exclusively to um, upgrade the bylaws. So this year, knowing that we're gonna be increasing it, I'm taking that and increasing it from $1,500 to $2,000. Any questions? Yeah. So yeah, that money is okay. that money is in an account we appropriated. Uh, oh, this is different. This is entirely different. We appropriated money to start the process to get the company yes. going and getting that. Once this is done, once we have codified and once we have this, um, it would be an ongoing uh, fee that we would have uh, Those, to maintain the codes yearly and and to in, and to update and and that uh, we will be getting five hard copies. We may not need five hard, hard copies. I'm thinking myself, the uh, uh, building inspector, the planning board, the uh, uh, selectman, and then that gives me a spare one. And those have to be maintained. If they change anything in it, then physically the town clerk has to take out the old pages, put in the new pages as far as doing that. So. If we find that we can do it digitally, then we'll reduce those and we'll have everything on the, the computer or on a, the town uh, website. Uh, okay. All right. So it's maintenance from after yeah, this. Yeah, yes, yeah, maintain, yeah, or maintaining the, yes. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? Anything anybody wants to ask about? One thing I want to bring up to date, we're still working on the, uh, the uh, assistant as far as doing that. We fill out our surveys and we're ready to, I guess, we're ready to publish. Is that, Andrea, is that what we're thinking about doing here soon? Yes, we've uh, we just classified the job. The selectmen will approve it tomorrow night at their meeting. And then with that classification in place, we can advertise. Okay, so the only thing that I was concerned with, with the classification, will the classification put this person um, into a different um, um, cost or should, is, do I have, is $10,000 do you think is enough? Because what uh, will happen. I'm, yeah. Okay. I, I'm doing that work. To, I was doing that work today, actually, just before we speak, I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. So the, the only drawback would be a that if. hours a week. If we run out of funds here, the person would not uh, come in for the week or whatever it was. No, I'll, until... I'll, br I'll bring it back to the finance committee before we do that. We, we have to fund okay. it fully. Okay. Okay. That's what the only concern I did. I threw in this as a placeholder, but you know, we thought that that right. would be enough. Uh, I think we just classified been. the person last week. So, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm... Prove it tomorrow night. So, so that may. Yes fluctuate somewhat that $10,000. That's the only thing I can think. Okay. Okay. Uh, ne next is the uh, capital request that you have. And uh, you spoke to us a while back here, another meeting, but I want to go over that. Tonight. Well, let me, let me explain how this came about really, as far as doing that. Um, 
during the, the COVID where we had very little contact with people could come in and get information, we were relying 100% or not 100%, but quite a bit on our website. Well, for quite a few people in the town of Northfield, they don't have access or they aren't, um, don't have the expertise to go onto our website and get all the information. So I would get a half a dozen or a dozen calls a, a day saying, hey, what are the meetings this week and what's happening? Uh, either they, you know, they can still come down and go into the back hallway and, and check that out. So, um, and or just trying to get out there the information to people. Now, at, and I was getting calls from a, a bunch of people, uh, taxpayers in the town, voters in the town that said, you know, it would be nice if we had some other way of doing it. The, the uh, newspaper doesn't work. Uh, the website, yeah, we go to it occasionally as far as doing that. But we want to be more transparent. We want to see, you know, what's going on as far as suing that. So um, one of the things that happened that I was we were able to um, utilize, um, I guess the Qantas had a movable thing that it came up with for some of the elections, but that has since not been available or can't be used. So uh, what turned this whole discussion some of the other boards and committees basically said, you know, especially the um, uh, senior uh, center was saying, you know, we like to get more information out there. So uh, what came to mind is uh, some type of a, uh, a message board that we would put out on a sign that would be electronically controlled. And what came to uh, be, I did some research as far as doing that. One of the things that concerned me is, as far as doing that is, does it meet um, the bylaws? Well, since we are a government organization, uh, we are exempt as far as doing that from having to get any kind of special permit. But the other half of the coin is we're also in a historic district from uh, Moody Center, the, no, I'm sorry, Moody, uh, yeah. The Eight. road up here, uh, Moody Street, Moody to Route 10. So it's it's basically Main Street. Well, obviously the town hall is on Main Street. So one of our concerns is is to try to make this uh, sign presentable as far as doing that and fit within the. Uh, so it doesn't is an eyesore. So some of the things that would be done with this would be uh, the stanchions that hold this this. Uh, um, sign up would be made out of bricks to mimic what would be on the uh, uh, town hall or some type of uh, colonial looking uh, sign as far as doing that with stanchions that would mimic anything that would be done in colonial times. So we are uh, concerned with the looks of it and would be working with the uh, historic uh, commission to, to do that. But again, they, they do have jurisdiction only from Moody to uh, Route 10. So they do have that uh, that uh, designation anyway. Okay. Uh, so I did get some quotes and you, and if you, you saw what was out there as far as doing that, they ranged from uh, 20,000 to about 30,000. But the, the thing with this, it, it does not include the, the brickwork that we want to do. So I was looking at the size and I'm thinking the size would be more like four by five, which would bring it down into 22 to 25 thousand dollar range as far as that and, and be big enough so that people driving by would be able to to see it and, and know what's going on in the town uh, so they would be able to know what, uh, for example you could put on there you know uh, transfer station clothes we've got I get calls every day of course on Fridays you can't do that they don't know uh, even though basically if it's a snow day if it's snowing out they're plowing they won't open up the uh, transfer station but uh, still, people need to see something out there. The little um, border boards, basically, the little fold-up things, they last about two years. They get blown over by the wind. They're really not a practical thing as far as doing it, and you can only put one message on them. So the thinking was, let's try to get as, as many, as much messages out there as we possibly can so that the town knows what's going on and it doesn't have to, you know, be um, blindsided by anything. And that's that's why I am pushing this as far as doing that. Um, I noticed, Dan, uh, well, we got this, uh, an estimate from this company that you- Correct. We sent that out. 
Uh, These are the ones that are around here. Uh, they have done other signs other places, but we would do is do something that would be very simple as far as doing that. Wouldn't be a flashing neon thing. Can't do that. Uh, it would be just something to, you know, what's going on on Monday the 5th, Monday the 7th, and that sort of thing as far as soon at, uh, very quickly. And then when we had uh, special events coming up, like local town meetings, town elections, those would be on there also. Again, that's where I come into play. Um, basically, it's just to inform the, the people in the town that, you know, want to be informed. One, one thing I got out of the fancy right now, but I think that it did not include the electrical hookup for it. Yeah, that's why I was going to go to a uh, small one, one, and um, that would give us probably at least $5,000 to be able to do the electrical and uh, the brick. Uh, if Again, this was put together, uh, I wouldn't say last minute, but the, the people that, are, that are, would do this would bring out some ideas and some signs. They actually have a vehicle they go around that has signs in it or on it and would uh, be able to show what the uh, display would look like. I see. Okay. All right. Anybody have comments and questions or questions? Yes, yeah, so I just have a question, though, Dan. You mentioned so the town, um, because one of the select board members sent a message about concerning the bylaw, and mm -hmm. I didn't see where there was an exception for the town on the issue of under placing section, the sign. Under section 8.22, basic requirements, exemptions uh, for uh, not having to require a special permit from the building inspector. Uh, legal notices, identification, information, or di uh, direction signs erected by governmental bodies. I would say the town is a governmental body, wouldn't you? Okay, so you say they're exempt. Now, the other they're issue you said- They don't be have one... to have a building permit. That does not say that uh, we don't want the historic uh, commission involved because, again, we're in a historic district. district. <laughs> the other thing, too, is you say it's going to be single face, so- Obviously, there will be the issue of visibility. And the other thing is, is that are you concerned about the safety issue of distraction because of the location of the town hall, not far from that intersection where uh, the churches and um, what's that uh, IGA is? I would just be concerned because there's also a pedestrian crossing nearby would be if in case somebody's distracted looking at a single face sign by the town hall, may well, not be paying attention coming near the uh, intersection. I'm talking for okay, traffic so safety. Let, let me take it to the next step. We put out three or four signs. They put out the uh, recreation sign was out there, mortar board. My sign is out there saying the uh, election coming up and senior center put a sign out there. What do you think is going to distract more, three signs or one? Be perfectly honest with you, I don't even pay attention to them, to be honest with you, because we have so many signs on Main Street. I don't even bother. Plus, I want to drive and be uh, driving well, a safe this manner. Be, okay, so I'm only, this would, Dan, hang on a second. Hang on, Dan. Yeah. I'm just concerned that it could potentially, an electronic board could be a potential distraction depending on how it's placed. I'm talking sure. for a safety issue. We don't know yet how it would be placed or where would it be placed on town hall property. I'm just thinking that's one thing we should also think of. Well, the because was, so the thought was, as you come into the driveway, okay, it would be angled if you you know where the rock is. There's a rock there, monument. Yes, thing. I'm familiar where it is. We're yep. in that area there on an angle, not straight out, okay, but on an angle, kind of facing diagonally across, say, to Mims, say, okay, somewhat mm -hmm. like that. So that basically you would see it more if you turned in because right now what we're having is a lot of people that are taking advantage of our drop box, and as they come through the drop box, you'll be able to see this very easily. Okay. I was unfamiliar at which angle you would be placing the sign at. Again, we're there's trying details. To do it as a, you know, basically non-obstructive as possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. And again, this would be, I'm just bringing this up. This would be going through a process that people would be getting involved in. And some of those people obviously will have to be the uh, historic commission. Okay. Uh, I noticed that B is on here uh, and hearing this, and she had some concerns about it being in a historic district. Uh, B, do you want to comment on this? 
he says there's an exception for a municipality. So I wondered if you would like to comment. Not necessarily for the historic, but definitely for uh, the building or the um, planning board. You wouldn't have to have a special permit. Okay, B. Um, so one, I appreciate what Dan is trying to do, which uh, people want outreach and want communication. I think there's a number of different ways of communicating. Um, I don't think we're getting the full use of our website, for example. So there's a couple of things. Um, one is from a historic standpoint, you're setting precedent for the sign, regardless of what your status is with the bylaws. Um, two, it's a lot of money for a sign for people and you're um, trying to reach folks who for some reason are not reading the paper, not using the website. Um, it, it's to me from a select board standpoint, it's, it's a lot of money, it's a big expense. Um, what I would like to see, cause I think there's a lot of considerations. So for example, the point that Bernie brought up, the fact that there's a lot of crossing and lights and concern. There's a whole discussion right now, right now on next door regarding crossing near first parish in the town hall. Um, I think what I would like to see is that we do the consulting and then bring a proposal that makes sense both dollar wise and meets all the other considerations. I'm not trying to shut your idea down. No, you know, basically okay. The reason I just want to I just want to make that clear. Oh, okay. I'm not trying to shut ideas down so much as I think it's helps if we do all the consulting before we bring uh, large dollar amounts to to the town meeting. That's um, and you know again from a historical uh, standpoint, we are setting precedents and. We just need to be aware of that. And the district, just for the record, goes from Pachog Brook to Miller's Brook. So it's it's actually longer than just what we think of on Main Street. Thank when you. was that changed? Because that was in 1983. It was from Moody to... Um, that's by, the uh, designation. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's the designation in the, in the historic register. I looked up the historic register this past weekend. That's the documentation that's listed on the National Park website. I, I think was... it's only, I think the bylaw controls the. That's fine. I'm just saying the historic district, not, I'm not saying the bylaw. I'm saying the historic well, no, the district. Historic, okay. The historic district bylaw from 1983 says Moody Street to Route 10 only. I don't know. Well, it's I just listed. Have it's listed nationally as Pachog to Millers. I understand but that's, that. I mean, we're still that's in. Fine. Like, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's talking about. This it's semantic. No, it I mean, it's, it's yeah. It's it's a historic district, and it's on the national register. How however short or long it is. So that was Rosa Johnson's project. Yes, and her her documentation is still all scanned into the Massachusetts website. So whenever I pull stuff down, I always see her, her notes. Okay. So, so I, again, this was just uh, brought to me by residents as far as soon as they asked me to try to bring it forward. So to me, there's, I, I really don't have that much skin in this game as far as doing that, but yeah. uh, I just wanted to make sure that um, the, do, the people that I did ask me about it knew that I went uh, forward with it. So. Yeah, and, and I would be concerned about that as well. I would love to know what their opinion is. I just, Northfield is a huge land mass and not everybody goes past Main Street. We and just frankly, had a lot of requests from multiple constituencies. Um, 
and I, I mean, I, I'm, 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 that would be I great. hear what Dan has to say about all these yeah. little signs. I'm, I'm sick of kind of storing them in the front of town hall. We have to keep dragging them in and out in the winter. I'm not, or, I'm not advocating um, for temporary signs, but they are temporary well, versus permanent. And that's so, a significant well, step. We put, them out. we put them out every week. It's just a lot of work. And, so, um, and people, people complain they can't see them because they're little and the state has moved them and they get, fr- we can't use them in the winter and they get frozen yep. in the ground. I get that. So we I'm not. Just, so we were trying to deal with some constituencies who were very concerned about election information, who were very concerned about that yep. not being so visible um, there are people, especially the Council on Aging is concerned with a lot of seniors who don't use the website because they don't use the computer. Mm-hmm. So we were just trying to find ways to reach everybody um, based on requests that we had from multiple um, mm-hmm. committees and um, residents. I would know. And I don't think... Well, I my, think again, my whole... If I could just finish, yep, yep. I think this kind of discussion per the other thing we were talking about with the lawns really should occur outside the finance committee so that we're all up to speed on the various points. And then the committee takes this all under advisement anyway and makes a recommendation, right? From a financial standpoint, the ins and outs of the signage and the communication to me should occur outside of this committee. And I'm happy to help. I'm not trying to force work on anybody. I'm not trying to say the idea isn't a good one. I'm just saying that I would rather bring a much more robust proposal forward after hearing about the constituencies and what else we're going to be doing from a communication standpoint. Okay, thank you. In addition to the historic, but thank you, Lois. I appreciate you asking me to comment. My biggest thing is I just want to get the conversation going as far as doing that if this was fine if it uh but now that we've got the the conversation going it takes it a little bit out of my hands which i that's what i like (laughs) we we can give you a committee if you like (laughs) that's all right (laughs) all right um so it's it'll go with with our other requests that we're Sure. when we consider allocating our money and whether we're for it or to recommend it or not. So thanks, Dan. No problem. Uh, Andrea. Uh, okay. Andrea, I think uh, next we'd like to, you have uh, sent in some more budgets here. And by the way, uh, you said that you don't have anything from the CBA yet. So you have told them that that would be level funded if they don't submit something. That's very typical. Every year it's the same problem in trying to get their budget from them. So, but you've sent in uh, the accountant. I assume now that's a contract with that company. Correct. And he's only, he's doing the a, a flat percent increase. Yeah. So. Anybody, any questions on that? Nope. I don't think it's nope. much we can. All right. And then uh, the Conservation Commission. Now they want they have a capital article. And but uh, I think we need to have them come in and talk about it. The rest I out to them. I haven't really had much success. Um, yeah, so I did want to forward it since I had put it in this, you know, put all of the rest of the capital articles here tonight, but I will reach out to them again. Okay, if you can uh, get the chair to come in or someone from representing them come in for next week, we can talk with them. We'll try to do that. Okay, thank you. And then... Uh, Treasurer and tax collector. Uh, just a little change in the treasurer. The Decrease, I guess, it looks like. From uh, last year's 30,500 to down to 28 something. And 
Okay, and then the tax collector is uh, down a little. And tax title. Well, that was no, I think it wasn't anything last year. So anybody have any questions or comments on those? If that's okay. Uh, there are other, uh, Andrea, do you, well, you've had, of course, you've had the closing, of course, and on the, any articles. Are there other capital plans or any other special articles that you're aware of? I sent you several, and I think see Gretchen is here this evening to talk about the one for the Northfield Elementary School. Okay. Uh, I think I sent you, um, I sent you two emails one had budgets in it and one had capital articles in it. Yes. And so she's, she's here to talk yeah, about the Northfield Elementary School one. Oh, yeah, good. we don't have any, any kind of an idea yet, do we? The cost? No, she's, yes, we do. I sent you the Northfield Elementary School capital request. Yes. Yeah, we, but to, to be determined. Well, That's what it's, uh, but Gretchen, yeah. Gretchen can speak to you on what, what, what they're doing with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, Wait a minute. I'll get, hold on just a second there. Elementary school. I think there were two requests, wasn't it? But anyway, uh, yeah, to be determined. And well, I sent you one that said Northfield Elementary School project amount two hundred and forty thousand renovation and refurbishment of the bathroom. Yes, there's oh, a design true. proposal. Yeah, the that. design proposal. Um, was just to give you a heads up on what we're doing. Uh, you have allocated the money for that. I've already communicated that to Gretchen that she can move forward with that. That was done at special town meeting. Remember when you moved some of those funds from the okay. unused capital projects? Um, I think that that would get this design work started so that you don't have to wait till town meeting to get the design work started. Okay. All right, so Gretchen. So she's just looking at the capital. Yes. Okay. Hello, so so this is for the, the good old bathroom that needs to be gutted. Is that then, what we're talking about? Okay. Why don't you go ahead, Gretchen, and explain? Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I um, had a design company from Greenfield, uh, Austin Design, came and they looked at the bathrooms. Um, the bathrooms that we're talking about are in the basement of the South Building. Um, they are very old. I think many of the fixtures are original. Um, the, you know, the partitions are wood. It, it kind of looks like an outhouse. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So I really, really want to um, get this project moving this summer, which would be fantastic. So that's why we tried to get this in, into the capital. Um, the high, you know, I only got an estimate from the designer who, who said the high on the high end would be $240,000. Um, yeah, so, and it all depends on, you know, they're gonna give us some different designs to look at, some different configurations. Um, I'm getting a lot of input from the school principal that having big gang bathrooms is not um, beneficial for elementary schools anymore because they don't like a bunch of kids congregating in a bathroom. So um, I think what they're gonna wanna do is split it up into multiple bathrooms. I see. Okay, any questions, comments? So that, okay, you've explained it's the South building. So that's the original building. Yeah. So it, they are pretty old then. Uh, anybody have questions or comments? No, if anybody's ever been in the building, that is the older part of the building, and basically, it's probably hasn't been upgraded for since the building has probably been uh built. So, doesn't yeah, it sounds like it. does the bathrooms have to be ADA accessible to beat all current standards? I assume. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, if you've been in these bathrooms, and I'm sure Gretchen can even tell you more, 
there's all sorts of problems with the piping they can't even get behind to repair. They're having leaks. They've had to turn some of the sinks and toilets off. If they're nothing's ADA compliant, this is, it's, it's bad. This, this bathroom, there's nothing to repair anymore. They've done multiple repairs, everything they can do. It's, it's really a, it's really a full, it's a full gut job at this point. Now I've heard, let's see, the district is, uh, getting uh isn't it a grant of some sort of funding to assess the two buildings that are being used mm -hmm. by the district elementary school the hours in Bernstein to assess the buildings and and tell what the needs are there's no money for the work but did you have you heard anything from them about that um yes. i can I could speak to that also. Um, Thank you. That, that assessment of that's of all three school buildings. Um, yes. That is something they were going to use ESSER funds for. And um, it, that process is a long process. That'll probably take about three years. So we didn't want to wait on these bathrooms okay. for, to, to hear what, I mean, we know they need to be redone. Yes. Um, so. So we didn't want to wait on that, but yeah, that assessment will happen with ESSER funds. Okay, I see. All right, any anybody question anything on that? All right, was uh, this is what I've got is the design service proposal. That's what you're going by. For now, then, right? Yes. Okay. Is that the only one you had? It was another. I guess that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, they're all. Yes. That's no the only one cat. from the school. Andrea. That's the only this? one from the from. It's the only one from the school. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gretchen. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Andrea, any, well, let's, well, I've got some others here. Um, this is the town hall work that's needed. For the ADA, the, the yes. American with Disability, it, it's actually in multiple buildings, town buildings. Um, I did apply for a grant for this money. Unfortunately, we weren't funded, um, but if you recall a year or so ago, you funded a study to do a 503, 504 transition plan and ADA compliance study. Um, so we had all the buildings looked at and a whole study was done by a consultant to look at um, everything from little tiny things all the way up to you know larger um, ADA compliance issues. Uh, they noted that bathroom as well, but obviously that's a separate article. But um, there was a whole group of, you know, I thought we could start with some of the quote unquote low hanging fruit in getting some compliance done in multiple departments and buildings. Um, again, I did do some, there is some quote work behind this. I do have, you know, pages of all the different costs of all the different signs and there's signs, everything from parking signs that are missing to incorrect signage on elevators to incorrect signage on bathroom doors, for example, in the library. So, you know, when it says something like signs, you know, it, those are put together. But yeah. if you go down the list, I just feel like we have to do something with those back doors to the town hall to get into the building. I don't, I think they're too heavy. I think they're difficult. You certainly couldn't navigate them very well with a wheelchair. No. Um, so I did get a quote um, to have both of those doors put on one of those, you know, more opening systems. So obviously it goes to the senior center as well as the town hall. So you're obviously getting people who are struggling with those doors. That was the biggest um, single cost. And then to redo the concrete at the landing, which is also rough and um, dis and in trouble, distressed, um, making that entrance to the town hall uh, much more um, handicapped accessible. Uh, then um, at the school, if you ever go into the school, you'll notice they have a door into this little tiny space in that's their office space and you're right up against a counter. To keep going, you go into the uh, 
principal's office, but that is, you can't even get a wheelchair in that doorway behind that counter. And if you did, you can't get out. Uh, the ca counter is too high. So anybody who has any kind of mobility issues has, has a very difficult time in that. And that was one of the first things they identified at the school is actually the secretary's office is right there, actually putting, a, there's a window there, but it's not, it's not a window you can open, making that window space an open space so that it's actually, you can come right up in the hallway to like a counter and an opening window to speak to the secretary without having to try to navigate into that tiny little office space. Um, that's what that second, uh, that third uh, new wall window opening and an access counter, which would be at the height of a wheelchair um, at Northfield Elementary School for the office access in the hallway. Because right now the secretary that whole office is really inaccessible to anybody, uh, even with walkers. You can't turn around in that space. It's this narrow, tiny little space in front of her, her rather tall desks, which you couldn't see over if you were sitting in a wheelchair. Um, the senior center, when you first go in the senior center on the left, uh, they've actually have to remove that counter. They're working on that now. Um, it's actually at the wrong height. It, anybody in a wheelchair would actually hit their head on it. Um, and there, we need a, a desk that allows somebody with a wheelchair to go under it. They're, they put their tabs to check in and out now in their new system. Um, th the desk they have now is not accessible. It's not, you can't use it like a desk. You pull up next to it. If you're in a wheelchair, you can't even lean forward enough to reach onto the desk. So we need some um, workspace um, issues there um, for computer and handicapped accessibility in the senior center. And then throughout town hall and, North, and the elementary school, there's missing grab bars, pipe coverings that are supposed to cover the pipes under sinks uh, in both the town hall and uh, elementary school, all identified in this report um, uh, singly in various places, including even in our bathroom and town hall, missing grab bars um, that are make the spaces um, actually non-ADA compliant. Um, then there's signs at the town hall, library, and the Northfield Elementary School including some van, handicap van parking signs, some elevator signs uh, in town hall. We have the wrong buttons, uh, signs around the buttons, the, uh, some signs for the restrooms. Uh, so there's indoor and outdoor signage issues for town hall library and the elementary school. And then I asked the library to look, they have a, a sign, a couple sign issues as well, but what they don't have is a compliant workspace for a team, for team, the teen room in the library. The desk is, the table's too low. So if you were, had mobility issues, you couldn't get under that table to actually come up to the table in the teen room. So we explored some adjustable workspace tables for that. So it's really all the different buildings in town. Um, and these are sort of the lowest hanging fruit in terms of not having to do huge, except maybe the school, um, do huge projects that would, would change too much structural uh, work, but would make, I think these for, for both the children uh, people with handicap and with seniors uh, make some of these spaces a lot more um, accessible and compliant. So I know it's a hodgepodge of projects there, but that's where that all works up to. Okay. If anyone has any specific questions. Is there any, you've probably looked into this, anything that the maintenance person can do? Well, I mean, most of, most, I mean, they'll be putting all this on <laughs> the maintenance person will be installing all of this. Um, uh, and okay. I did talk about doing the back with the, with the, um, this, this concrete pavement landing presumes the cost of the materials. We would be working with the highway department to actually do the work. It would be a lot more expensive if we hired someone to actually rip all that concrete out and do it, replace it. But that's just more the purchase of the materials um, for okay. that, for that, for doing that pad. But, um, you know, doing the door, those doors are by a vendor. I mean, you have to have them come yeah. and install yeah. them. And all the rest of the stuff is mostly just physical things that would then have to be, in, we would then be installing them. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments from anybody? I think some of, you know, I don't look upon this as saying that, well, somebody didn't do it right in the first place. I think the laws change as uh, get more strict as we go along too, and that accounts for part, part of it and so forth. There's retrofitting over time. Things were done before things needed to be done. And, you know, yeah. 
so changes occur and um, so we're just trying to to be as responsive as possible sure. to the things that have been identified that we can take care of on our own for the okay. most part. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. Don't know that I have anything else. Oh, that's the conservation information one. They, right. The conservation wants a Chromebook, laptop, or other similar device. I think right. uh, that's what we were gonna talk in. What's the situation uh, with the secretary there? Did it ever get under the umbrella of the secretary to the other boards or not? Uh, they haven't yet. We've ha talked about it um, because right now they've kind of got a member who stepped up and is doing a fair amount of that work. But we we suspect that, you know, over time that there will be some more cross work. We'd like her to just if she they want her to just start taking minutes so she can understand and learn before we just throw her into doing paperwork for them. That's been my olive branch all along. And as soon as they want that, we will step up on that and we will we will go there. So I suspect at some point we're going to see this. Um, I've kind of tried to dissuade them from this capital request, honestly, at this time. Um, not that I don't want them to have the access to the um, hardware, um, but I really, I, I have to talk to Robin some more. I'd really like to figure out what their plan is with that. Are they hiring somebody to use it? Because Frankly, I'm much more inclined as I'm doing now in retrofitting a used system to my board's clerk that that clerk would be using it for all of these departments. And we don't need to have every department having their own piece of hardware. I find that um, an expensive way route to go. Yeah, and in that case, then this equipment wouldn't be necessary, am I right? And that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that if we, our board's clerk is doing three different departments. She's using one piece of hardware. It's one piece of hardware to maintain. It's one access to maintain. It's one email to maintain. It's a lot yeah. easier than allowing and then going into all of this for every single committee. Yeah, right. It'd be a domino effect. Um, when, I spoke it with when I spoke earlier about having them in, do you think Given the situation that we know as far as secretary and what's happened, do you think it's going to be any good to have them come in? I'll reach out to Robin again and talk to her um, and see, okay. see what they're thinking is at this time. They submitted that a while ago, so I didn't want to ignore their request, but um, right. I haven't been able to communicate with her lately. So I will reach out to her again and get an update. Okay. Anybody have any problem with that? No, not at all. Nope. Okay, thank you. I think that um, we, well, I wish I had asked Bob McEwen a little bit. I did realize when we had the Board of Health in, and he's no longer on the Board of Health, he was there. And uh, the, he's put in this transfer station uh, request for if another compactor and uh, what do we got? Uh, $21,000. Uh, I'd like to see a plan of how many they have and what's their life expectancy and get them on a sort of a replacement plan. But uh, this one sounds like this one is, he said it's on its last leg, this one here. Anybody have any? concerns or anything about that well i did ask him about that when he was here as far as doing that did he have to put yeah. him on a rotation as far as yes, doing that? He he said, no, the other ones are fine yeah so i i don't know whether you know 20 years is predictable or what he did speak he did speak to me and i have um forwarded him uh the form and we are going to work on him using the same standard form that I have the other departments on to try and do some capital planning for all the equipment down there. Okay, oh, that's good then. All right, okay. Uh, are there, Andrea, as far as, um, are there in, now are there any other special articles or capital plans that we don't have yet? 
special articles uh, that you know of? I don't know at this time. I haven't received anything. I'm now that we've kind of gone through the budget process, I'm starting to put everything into the master spreadsheet. Once I start doing that, I then start creating the draft warrant. And if anything's going to pop up at that time, that's when it does. The only thing I can see um, that will probably be an article um, will be um, an article for a water district. If they decide to move forward with that, which at this time, I think we may it, uh, be looking forward to for at least creation of the district as a legal entity. We need to get that uh, permission from the town to put that um, as a um, before the legislature before the July special set before this July session ends. So we're kind of on a time constraint for that. So you may see that article. It doesn't involve any money at this time. It just involves actually the home rule petition to ask the legislature to create a water district. Um, I should be getting a red line version of that from our attorneys in the next week or so. So that might be an article. Um, so there'll be uh, probably a special meeting. As soon as I have that material, I'm working with the other entities to try and put together um, a, a meeting for people who are interested in talking about the creation of a district and getting all those numbers together. Um, probably we'll see that in April, obviously before town meeting, that's our goal. Okay. Um, I'd like to consider bringing back um, the uh, local option tax for uh, room rental. Um, so yeah. I'm working, I'm thinking that's something we should again consider. I know we talked about holding off for another year on that, but we are seeing now movement on um, two large bed and breakfast potential openings and the campground, all of which would, would be additional revenue sources to the town if we do some sort of short-term rental or hotel motel tax. Someone's telling me skip that altogether and go straight to that. So I'm exploring what which one of those makes more sense. <laughs> um, but I would like to put that article back on for consideration. Yes, I think at the time it was brought up before, they just simply said it wasn't the right time for it. Right. Rather than just tossing it out completely. Yeah, there's right. the campground. I, I guess now they finally settled things so they can go ahead with it. Yes. Okay. That was settled last year. Uh, yeah, okay. And then they want to make uh, Ravel and, and, Holton. Holton, right. and Holton into uh, rooms to rent, uh, right? Correct. Like a hotel or so, whatever. I don't know what they're going to call it. But yes, it would be, if we're going to do anything like that, it's better to do it before they're in business than so forth. Uh, I don't have a problem with that being on the warrant. Is anybody else? No. Nope. And how now the water district? You say you had the, what's the process here? You're going through the state legislature to form a district. Is that correct? You have to by law. You have to have enabling legislation passed under a home rule petition that would create the district. Okay. So. Yes. Uh, how how does the town fit into this plan uh, without without some in, in, you know responsibility or financial contribution? It's, it's, what well, it, it's a district. It's a district like the sewer district, so it becomes an its own. There is no legal. sewer. Well. The sewer enabling legislation, oh well, the sewer has its own uh, enterprise fund that runs its own expenditures. Um, they pay, they use town services, but they pay a, an indirect cost to do that. So what we're doing with our draft enabling legislation is defining that. And that's what needs to come before people at a public meeting. What do they want that to look like? Do they want there to be some involvement by the town and then the town, the town is reimbursed for those services? Do they want to say, no, nope, go hire your own secretary and bookkeeper. Nope, Do you, that's the that's the part of the discussion that needs to happen at a public meeting with residents, so that you can decide you, what does that legislation actually say. You're going to propose that the town take ownership of the no, not the town. 
Well, why is the town getting involved in this? You have to do it's it. A that private way. entity. Town it's has a to private, pass the it's legislation. It's a private thing. I mean, that's just like the Northfield Water District is a private thing. Why is the town getting involved in this? The, the, that's the, a private the, thing for them to deal with on their own. Two, di two different things. The a private company is different than a public district. The North I understand Water that district because they can't public get public district. funding. I absolutely understand that. But why are well, we getting- Well, the Northfield Water District can. They're a, they're a public district and they were formed uh, right, at some right. point Right, the Northfield Water District can, but the East Northfield right. Water Company cannot. Right, so they need to become a, a water district. Correct. But in order to form that district, it has to be passed by the town, legis the towns allowing them to petition the, the state for enabling legislation. So you're telling me the, the town is not meeting. going to have any financial or legal responsibility once this district is formed? Not if that's what's in the enabling legislation, you will not. Well, who and, determines that? Is that that's gonna... exactly right. That's exactly what the public meeting is for, and that's what the voters at town meeting vote on. They vote on that enabling legislation. And I think that because this is such a major issue, and uh, it could be very divisive to have this brought up that we have a meeting in April and then within 30 days or less have a town meeting. I think mm -hmm. this should be tabled and not put forward at this annual town meeting whatsoever. I agree. I well, agree. Then, you've got, then you're- okay, I agree well, with Bernie. Okay, then you're waiting two years. So okay, we wait. wait okay. Exactly. Well, this a, is something a, we need that the residents have to be fully educated, informed of, so they can make a responsible decision, so we don't make a mistake that could cost the town or, you know, cause headaches down the road. I think this is going way too fast. It's not been uh, the townspeople and even ourselves don't know much about what's going on with this. Uh, most of us only really found out in the last 30 days or so or had rumors of this was going on. I think, honestly, this is going- well, there was a big, pretty big presentation to the select board, and that's the information we're going to turn into a much bigger presentation to the residents. But I'm, I'm not, I, if you are if you want some specific information, Bernie, I'm happy to bring that to you. I'm not I sure understand, what question... but what I'm saying is this is moving way too fast. This needs to be thoroughly studied and analyzed and should be the townspeople to just suddenly, we're going to present, present this in April and make come up with the legislation or the wording for this uh, that to be forward to the state legislature and, and vote on it. No, I'm sorry. I think you're gonna have a problem. This is also gonna be potentially a very divisive issue in this town where a majority mm -hmm. of people are gonna be concerned that this could turn into something that the town could be financially or legally stuck with. And for a majority of the people of this town who have private water and sewer, I think this is gonna be a very potentially divisive issue. And I think but honestly, I Rushing this through is inadvisable. First of all, I agree Bernie, with Bernie. First of all, I, I think that's premature until you've actually heard the material to say that the town's going to be on the hook for any of it, because that's the point of the enabling legislation is the town wouldn't be. We why well, haven't received any information so far? I mean, town meetings are, three months away, two months away. We've been working I mean, this with is big, this is a big thing. East Northfield Water Company has 40 years of deferred capital improvements, mm -hmm. capital needs. Mm -hmm. For the town to take any potential liability for the fixing- The town is taking no liability here. The town we, is not taking on any liability if this becomes a legal district. What I'm trying to do is help our residents not lose their water. That's all I'm trying to do. We have a Earlier. consultant. We have a consultant, RCAP, which is a, which is a a, a a nonprofit agency that does this for a living. That's not costing the town or the residents or anything to anyone. They are working very closely with um, East Northfield Water uh, Company, and they are working with the largest fifty percent user, uh, the college to work on creating a district that would self-regulate, pay for itself, and be able to roll into a large capital project that would be paid for by the district through the probably the USDA, um, uh, water improvements for the residents of the Northfield, as well as all the other users of, the, of what would become a district. This is not about the town of Northfield as residents of the town of Northfield in general, taking on any financial or legal obligation for this district. Would there, be the other thing, 
Would there be an article on town meeting to fund this district once it's no. established? To fund, no. To form the district, not to fund it, no. So after forming the district, there'd be no involvement of the town. It'd be like the Northfield Water District. Yes, it becomes a district and RCAP walks is the consultant that helps walk everything through funneling it, all the assets of the company, all that goes into the district is nothing. It's not the town's hand to do that. It'll be an independent municipality. Yes. But didn't you say it was depends on how it was written as to whether or no. not the town had liability no. and monetary no. because that is in such disrepair, it's going to cost millions of dollars to fix that. No, it's, it's not how it's written that the town will be liable. The structure of how it operates itself has to be written into the legislation, but not the town. The town's not operating it. It has to operate but, itself like a district. The district if the district's like the gonna be district. doing it, I mean, it's gonna be a tremendous, I can't imagine what their user fees are gonna be if they're gonna have to be paying for this themselves. There's a whole pro forma financial analysis that has been done by a consultant on how to pay for this, what the capital needs are. We have the capital needs assessment. We have a consultant from the uh, RCAP, which is a, a, a national company that does, uh, does this kind of work. Uh, they've looked at all, that's exactly what the work they're doing now. But what has to go to the town is just a vote to form this, the empty shell that would become the district. And should all that work out, then all of that moves into the district. The town doesn't have any legal or financial obligation to this district once it is created and once it starts, once it's formed. Can we and put that operation. into the uh, motion for the, if you have the article, can we put that into the article that the town will have no obligation now or in the future? Well, I mean, I don't know how it's written, but we can look at it. It's, it's, not, it's not even a question of the town. It's a question of creating a legal entity that will operate independently and hold the assets. It's nothing to do with the town. Yeah, but we still would like the safety net of having that language well, in there. I would absolutely require that be in there in writing that the town has no legal liability or responsibility, especially if the, dis the district goes bankrupt that this town has no responsibility for it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is I feel for the East Northfield people, a lot of this is not being driven by the homeowners. It's being obviously from what we keep seeing, it's driven by the college itself as the largest user, but they're also the residents I feel for are going to be getting a double whammy because they're looking at a sewer district or the, excuse me, the sewer enterprise fund that has millions of dollars mm -hmm. of needed repairs to the plant and their sewer lines, plus the potential impact of all the repairs necessary and upgrades to the water system. And I really have to think, how are they going to afford it? Mm -hmm. How are these people really gonna afford all this? So that's my concern that they'll say, we can't afford it, we need the town's help in this matter. So I want it quite clear that if any language is written, that the town has no responsibility for this whatsoever. Yeah, they can't write, they can't vote that in, that the town has responsibility. They if you have no responsibility. That. If no you vote it in, it's an independent municipality. Yes. The town has no responsibility. Correct. When, when can we see that article? I, I don't have, I'm getting a red line version. I just said the lawyer is working on it. The other thing we, as a finance committee, we should also be knowing the current, uh, if this is gonna be honestly brought before the voters and us as a finance committee should know too, so we could be educated, is the fact is what's the current financial status of the water company? Mm -hmm. What's its debt? What's its li potential, li you know, the liabilities for all the repairs that are going on? potential. All, this should all, all be public of, information and should be put out as soon as possible so the residents can see its its true state. Well, B sat through the preliminary presentation for the select board. We just did the preliminary work. You have to understand that we are we have they have done a big pro forma. I have it all the way down. They've done some small, you know, presentation on it, but we have all those numbers. They the college funded a consultant at 
the tune of, I think, several thousands of dollars to go through the financials for the East Northfield Water District, pretty much with a fine tooth comb and do out a full pro forma on what things would look like for the next couple of years. And assuming uh, a change, assuming uh, taking on some responsibility for hiring staff, assuming a responsibility for a certain amount of debt, and um, working with a, the consultant, RCAP, who does this for a living, takes these districts through uh, USDA type funded projects, estimating the kinds of costs of projects, the kinds of cost of what kind of debt payment would be able to be afforded by this district. I mean, a lot of this work is, is, is already underway and being done. You have to understand we're working with a company that doesn't have you, you know, an obligation to give us anything and they've given us everything. They're not hiding anything. We've asked that, that because, of course, it's in their best interest for the, yes. the North with Northfield Mount Herman to unload this company, which obviously is not profitable for them. It has tremendous liabilities for them, and they've been look, and and even it's been uh, in the recorded that they've been uh, suffering losses up until uh, June of last year when they raised the rates. So it's in their best interest to unload this thing and North get Field, out from Herman. underneath it. Yeah, right. the but, school. They're yeah, the owners. Remember, no, yeah, Northfield Mount Herman versus Thomas Aquinas. So Thomas you know, Aquinas. What I'm saying is, yeah. Northfield Mount Herman currently yes. owns the water company. Correct. It would be nice. Why don't they, if this is such a good idea, why doesn't the college take ownership and transfer mm -hmm. it to the college? They're the largest user. They're the largest well, user by far. And they're, they're also obviously pushing this issue that because, they want because, because they want. Why would they be funding these consultants? Because obviously they need this situation more than the yeah. residents do. Yeah. No, they need it just as much as the residents do. The residents right. need well, good again, quality, dependable water as much as anyone. But again, too, this is, I, it's, I don't, it's, it's a I'm big not change. in favor of this being put forward to the residents without proper study, proper meetings and discussion amongst the residents of town. This is too small, too short of a window to provide this to towns, to the townspeople for the annual town meeting. I believe it should be delayed and really give it the opportunity to ask the right questions and to study this issue and not push it forward this quickly and try to push it forward onto annual town meeting. This is a multi-million dollar issue. There's two yes. months to annual town meeting and we haven't seen a damn thing. That doesn't make any sense. To, it's not going to cost you anything. Well, but you you said earlier, as Sue said- Show us the article. How the article's written. I, it's no, I didn't say depending how the article's written that the town's gonna have any liability. The structure of how the district's gonna run depends on how the, in other words, how many people have our sewer commissioners, how they vote. Those are all details that are in the article. The town is not going to be liable. You will see the article, you will see all of this, but the truth is the town, we're not asking for any money for the town to run this district. It's been made very clear that the town won't support that from, from me, from the select board. It's not supported at all if the town is in any way part of the legal structure of this district. It's already right. been made very clear. If it, if it continues to stay as a private company, there's no improvements that can be made really because they've lost so much money. Um, and, and also Northfield Mount Hermon is an educational institution. Um, the structure of having a private water company is pretty archaic. And um, with all of the changes that are going on with infrastructure at the national level, the funding, the timing actually is important because of the potential of that district being funded and actually able to go for grants. So the presentation that was given to the select board by RCAPS, RCAPS is a nonprofit organization that works with USDA specifically on grants. And they're advising for free this, this, this venture. I think what Andrea is talking about is it's the timing is good from a, all of the funding is coming together and it's a live, I'm an East Northfield water person. I, there's going to be no improvements to the infrastructure through a private water company that's owned by, by a secondary school. 
right? If we get a USDA grant, as was discussed with our caps, then the potential exists to actually have USDA pay for all of the infrastructure, including new meters for like ridge people, the um, infrastructure that goes along Highland, for example, none of that could be possible unless it's a, it's a public district. But I hear the concern about communication and that's why we started it. And I think that's why Andre is giving you a heads up. And if, if it would be useful to the finance committee, I'm sure that we could go through that whole presentation again. Um, I, I need the paperwork. I, oh. I two months to town meeting, the, the East Norfolk Water Company is a deficient distribution system, has no significant water source. Those are millions and millions of dollars of improvements needed. Now right. I understand the money's available, but this issue has been dragging on for 10 years. 10 and years, it's been like 40 years or well, something. Well, 40 years, but They haven't years. done any improvements for many, uh, many years. That's why the rates went up the way that they did a few years ago because they had never addressed it. I, I was a water resource engineer. I know the situation. Okay. And if it's not clear that this is a separate municipality like the Northfield Water District, I don't see there's any way in the world we can support this. Right. But, well, that makes sense. So what you're saying is that it has to be a separate water district then. Is that, am I correct? Yeah, separate municipality. Right. That's, I think that's what Andrea is saying. Well, so she, preferred, she preferred to it being like the sewer department. No, mm -hmm. no, it, it's a district. It's a, you have to do an enabling legislation to make it a But the other thing that brought to attention is that they're looking at that the water, the so-called water district would also cooperate with the town and with the sewer uh, the district. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are they going to cooperate now with the town side? Are we going to, to me, I'm concerned is that it's going to be the drip drip. We start getting a little involved, then we get more involved, and then we get more involved, and the town's all cost going up. And the other reason too here is, is that the, town, the college, through their generosity, is paying the fees because I demanded that the town not expend one dollar on spending for this water district without approval of the taxpayers. But the thing that gets me here is, is again, you have stated clearly that they have no obligation to assist with the with the uh, sewer district because they're a user. Fine. They're going to have no obligation to assist with the water district, even though they're their larger user. And they're also tax exempt. So tell me, if this is so important to them, let them put some skin in the game. Why should it also be all, because a lot of this responsibility too is gonna to be on the residents, the individual homeowners who are gonna have a probably a very unaffordable way to live there when they pay for all those sewer improvements and then the water district improvements. They're gonna scream for assistance. This That's is what's gonna come. Don't, don't expect the federal government or the state or whatever to pay for all these repairs gratis, or you're going to, you're going to have to bond probably. And this is going to cost mm -hmm. these rate payers a great deal of money. And it's, to have such not, a major not a, issue. It's, not facing, a bond. it's, it's not probably a bond part grant USDA. money and part loan. Right. And they factored you're going to get in a loan money. payment you're not going to get in all the pro grant money. No. And they factored in a loan payment in the pro forma. They've been, they, they're not, they're not doing this blindly and they're working with a company that does this professionally. USDA is not a bond. You don't issue a bond. That's one of the reasons you go with USDA. It's not a bond. You don't have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to, to issue a bond. Um, and they are part grant and that gets some of the money paid for. You're right. Rather than having to borrow, having to borrow from USDA, that's who you pay um, back. And you can also bond, you can also pay it over 40 years, which lowers the payment as opposed to other infrastructure payments, which might be 20 years, which allows it to become a much more affordable loan because you can do it over a much longer period of time. This is all done through public, public entities, public process, public funding, none of which can be done to help the residents who live in that water district unless it becomes its own legal district entity because it cannot participate in any of that as a private, not as a private for-profit company. That is the only thing we're trying to facilitate is them turning into this district. 
then the residents own it. It's their, it's their infrastructure. They become the legal owners. They can go to commissioner meetings. They can elect their commissioners. They can then, they can then run themselves like the water district does now. Like the central water district or whatever, Northfield water Northfield district. Northfield water right? district runs itself, yes. We don't have any liability associated with the Northfield water district. No, none. So is, is what would the finance committee like then? You would like the presentations, it sounds like as well. Presentations, as the financials, and also okay. a Let's guarantee just, some type. Yeah. But the other thing too is we wanna make sure there is a clear, unequivocal guarantee that the town is not liable for any future costs or if the company or this group goes bankrupt, mm -hmm. that it doesn't end up being the liability for the town itself. That must be in this, in, for, in the uh, language of that uh, thing you wanna put forward to the, uh, to the state world. legislature. We want absolutely no liability or responsibility for that water district. And that better be in the Financial language. Legal. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, and if it isn't in there, I'm sorry, I will do everything I can to make sure I oppose this to the nth degree. Okay. Um, do I have to uh, run any of this money that's coming? It can be available through USDA and through this private company. Does that money have to run through the town by any chance? No. No, if it's not, if the town's not involved, why would it? You have to have engineers and everything in place before you can even apply for the money. No, it doesn't run through the town. Okay, all right. It runs through their own books. All right. So, uh, so Bernie, you don't want any town tax dollars to be used in this project, correct? Absolutely not, that. and no town liability, any future liability whatsoever. If it's, a, if it's its own legal district, the town is not affiliated in... The town of Northfield won't be affiliated anymore with it as the town of Bernardston is. They're not legally affiliated. I want that in, in right. And the other thing too is my concern too is what will happen if the employees, are these employees gonna be in any way under the district in no way connected to the community as you're saying, as our enterprise fund is, is that correct? So this, the other district, they aren't part of our employees as far as doing that. So why would no. these people be part of our employees? I'm, I'm well, asking that, but I what Dan, my concern is for the long-term financial stability of this town and to avoid a seriously divisive issue. I do not I understand want that, to... but but basically if you look at the other district, if that's what you're thinking, modeling it after, they don't we don't give them a nick. Well, we do if we have a uh, hydrant, but we pay for the water going through the hydrants. But other than that, uh, which we have to, because that's a bill, we don't um, pay any of their salaries. Uh, we don't pay for any of their upkeep. We don't pay for any of their insurance. So it'd be handled like that. And if that's the case, then, you well, know, Dan, you have would to be, you like, agree that that would work? But the well, other thing is, Dan, this is a major ways. issue that's being this brought is... before the townspeople, okay. and there's been very little time and information provided to the residents who have to make this important decision. Plus, you're asking all the residents to come forward at town meeting, all residents to have to vote on this issue. If this was just an issue involving the customers making that decision, great, let them do so. But no, you're coming to this law. Come before the Bernie, that's the law. I, I can't change the law not... about how the districts voted on to be established. That's well, the law. I'll tell you, if you see this as this is being such an issue here just tonight with us, and you're not seeing a great deal of support here. Maybe there are some who do, but I still think this should not be brought before town meeting at this quick of a pace without the residents being fully informed on this situation. And it the you have up until now, look at we're almost in the middle of March. Well, and we're looking at town meeting in May. So you're looking at the residents are only going to have less than a two, probably two month window to make a decision on this. I think that's really actually not, this should give it more time. Put it forward to next year's town meeting. Let's inform the public. Let's have our informational sessions and then put it for, put forward to next year's town meeting. How would you, um, so communication, 
and we can discuss this offline because this, I mean, communication is an ongoing interest for me as a select board member communicating outward. So if there's specific suggestions on communication, I'm more than happy to hear them. And I, I know this is, it's a big issue and I can see, I can see the passion and the, the concern and it's, it's noted. Because, you know, you I, take I a look. I just want to say that. I, I've been on the public noted. safety committee for five years. We've been discussing it for five years or right. in, in totality for almost 12 years. And suddenly we're being brought forward this information in two months to bring it forward to annual town meeting in two months. I think it's, that is, <laughs> that is well, unwise. The way that, but the way that communication goes, mm -hmm. Bernie, um, some people feel like the emergency services building is, is hitting them you know, by surprise. So it, I think the communication of all of the big things that we're tackling in Northfield continue to be a challenge, right? Um, to well, get, what communications have we had that be up until now? Really? We just had a major pre, we spent an hour on it in the last you, select board meeting. Yes, and, we, and you're wanting to bring it before town meeting in May? Come on now, I think that's ridiculous. I really oh, do, I'm sorry, no. I really do. But that's your, okay, that's we, your opinion. We and I think the Toronto residents are gonna feel the same way. A couple okay, of things so here. You I think we all agree we need more information. We'll try to get that more information. As yes. far as, you know, we kick this horse as much as we can tonight. Let's move on to uh, anything else, but uh, everybody understands the way everybody feels. So yeah, let's move on. Yeah, two things that you just mentioned here. Enterprise fund, uh, anybody working in those uh, EMS is enterprise and so sort of, they're town employees, town benefits and that sort of thing. So that's not the same. Uh, what V has suggested here is the possibility of the same people that presented to the select board come to the finance committee with the same presentation. Am I, is that what you're suggesting? I, yeah. I'm just offering if that would be helpful because then we can walk through the details yes. and take advantage of people's concerns as well as expertise. Uh, how do people feel about that? It could, it uh, would be nice. I think where it'd are be from, See, where are they from? Or we we do it by Zoom anyway. Yeah, so we do. We could do it by Zoom. The um, they were in person at the select board meeting. Yes, and they're also now I think working or about to work with the sewer commission too to to help them like start digging through some of their challenges. Um, I, I Andrea knows I don't know him directly, but he was he was super helpful and happy to answer lots of different questions. So I'm sure we could um, have him come. Andrew from RCAPS, Andrea? Yes, yeah, yeah. Andrew Evans. Yeah. And uh, then, there's, then there's a whole PowerPoint on what has been going, uh, you know, a description of what has been going on with Thomas Aquinas. And the water company. And the water company, exactly. Well. Shall we ask for that? I mean, again, that's short notice to them, but it would be very similar to what they presented. Well, I, I, to present, the I presented the PowerPoint, except for RCAP. That was Andrew. Right. We actually spent most of the time, well, we went through Andrea's um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, and then we spent most of the time talking with Andrew from RCAPS. Right, about the project. and Yeah, this. and RCAPS is... As I'm sure Jack knows, RCAPS is a nonprofit organization that works on these sorts of issues across the country. Shall we go ahead with that and get more information? I think that would be advisable. We okay. definitely need more information. I'm surprised we have nothing to do. Jack, I'm sorry. What was it? I'm surprised for information. information to date. It's, this is millions and millions of dollars are gonna be needed to upgrade the East Yorkville Water Company infrastructure. And the complicated issue 
in less than two months of town meeting, we haven't seen a damn thing. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, Andrea, could you arrange this PowerPoint presentation for us? I'll, I'll talk to Andrew and see what availability um, he has. Oh, what you have, yeah. Because we'll be meeting the next couple of Monday nights. So it'll, it's not much notice to them, but since it's a repeat performance, really, that I'm not too concerned about the timeline. It's just their, their availability. They have the material. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks, V. Um, any other... I'm still at this, Andrea. Any other? You've you're touched on articles and any other this deadline for capital requests. Anyway, has come back. Uh, anything else that you want to update us on, Andrea? No, I don't think so. At this point, I'm just working on putting it all together in the master spreadsheet now. Okay. All right. Then I guess we'll move on to the. The minute. Oh, by the way, did did all of you get the uh, information that I sent out? I got it from tech school this morning and sent it out to everybody. So we have what a, what he was talking about, the superintendent. Yep. So you perhaps hadn't checked your email. I don't know. Did people receive this? They should have. Yes, I've, I've got even over it as far as doing that. And he mentioned that it this was a uh, draft and that they were going to be voting on it, um, yeah. I guess, tomorrow. And then we would get the final, which would be all inclusive. Yeah, usually there are no changes, but uh, yeah, that's their procedure and so forth. So, okay, fine. Uh, how about the minutes? I've sent those out this morning, I guess it was. The minutes of February 28th. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of uh, February 28th as written. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approved unanimously. All right. Gretchen, could I ask you what your connection is? Are you school PTO or are you? I'm not objecting to your representing and telling you. I'm glad you did. But uh, what is your position there at the schools? I'm the facilities director. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So you're for the district? Yes. Okay. Uh, I knew that some that somebody had filled the position. I wasn't sure who. Thank you, but you you're a Northfield resident, though I believe. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, any any reports of meetings attended representing the finance committee, Bernie? Anything more on the public? Nothing staff? further. Uh, nothing further since our last. Uh, Finance committee meeting. Okay, and uh, Tony for the CPA. Yes, the, um, we did a, approve the uh, proposal of the historical society for the painting of their building, and they we've we've um, gotten a warrant, which uh, we'll be sending to Andrea Andrea very shortly. Okay, and we've also. Uh, up the numbers, uh, we've, we've had the same numbers for years uh, as far as what, how much money goes where. Um, yeah. And we are getting more from um, both fees and from state matching funds. So I think we've, instead of $25,000, we've upped that to uh, uh, $28,000. Uh, so 10% to those three entities would be 28 2800 so yeah those are the, the mandatory other ones the What's mandatory that? accounts that you have to right put. the mandatory account so it, it, each one went up uh it's an equal amount okay so that's it 
Yeah, thank you. I didn't see any communications. All right. Um, or anything else that wasn't anticipated. Uh, next, we'll meet next week again. And uh, conservation, it comes to mind that we've talked about. And then this presentation, if you can do it, Andrea will see what you can come up with for items to be interviewed for the agenda. Okay. Andrea? I'm here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for the cons come? Yes. Unless you feel comfortable trying to well, me, we don't. Let, yeah, I'll I'll put them on if she wants to come and talk. I'll I'll talk to her and see what our plan of attack is on her yeah. capital request and her computers. And if 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 it turns out we resolve it, then we won't bring it to you. Exactly. If she feel if we need to move forward with that, then we'll then we'll do it that way. Okay, that's fine. Exactly. And uh, do any of the members of the finance committee have any other departments that we have not seen that you would like to see? or any other budget or anything. No. There's only, uh, you know, Andrea, when we say a uh, level fund from last year, that's all well and good, unless there was a spike last year for some special reason, then I don't wanna just carry it over and say yeah, level. And I don't think yeah, that was the case. For I don't the think CBA. that was the case. Yeah, I don't think that was the case. No, I don't no, no. CBA has been pretty steady over time. No, there's no spike there. Yes. Okay. And uh, if if we get those coming in one or two next week, then we'll be starting after that on our. Well, we'll need to know from Andrea what how much money we have available. Now I know the state budget isn't passed yet, which is typical. So we go with, uh, what do you think, Andrea? Level funding from the state? Uh, the, yeah, the governor's done his analysis. It looks like two point something. So we have governors, the governor's number, which is usually not the number that ends up. It usually ends up being the house bill, but usually I, I level fund it. It isn't a huge increase from the governor's number anyway. It's like 13 grand or something. So it's not. I try to be pretty conservative. Uh, normally yes. I even cut it back somewhat, but I don't think it's gonna get cut this year. If anything, it's gonna go up because there's a lot of pressure on the House and Senate to raise that number because the yes. tax collections are at an all time high. But um, but I certainly would level funding, I think is the safe safest route. Okay, and we've got free cash. Yeah, I'll send, you all, I'll send you all the revenues. When I do the spreadsheet and send you that out to you, you'll see the master sheet that shows estimated revenues and okay and all that and by the way i wanted to mention uh i've got a pvrs update on here and you probably saw today's paper uh for northfield it's a 1.72 percent increase and which amounts to well then we'll, our assessment will be 4.75 million i guess but that's the percentage increase. So uh, I don't know what the capital request is going to be. You haven't heard anything on capital from them, Andrea? Not from PVRS. I mean, we have the Northfield Elementary School one, but I haven't seen a, a, um, if there's a capital request from the high school, they have not sent anything forward. Yes. Okay. It's not yeah. generally high. No, I don't know if that's going to hold if they're going to go for something bigger i'm, I'm not sure so no and the bill what you're saying is right what are the building to the extent of the bathroom work and all that sort of thing is our own responsibility so anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up at this time no all no, right in that case i'd like to make, some, make a motion that we adjourn is there a second? Second. <laughs> okay. All right. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Good night, See you all. Next week. Good night. Good night.